not like I'm telling you that geology has the answer or genetics has the answer, but they correlate with each other. Genetically, we, we see that they're about where they should be in terms of how closely related we are. And the same thing we look at in the, in the fossil record in geology, and we can see that, that that matches up fairly closely. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, my response, if evolution is true, why don't we have apes instead of babies? Uh, I would agree there's certainly a genetic difference. Uh, I, I think I would disagree a little when he said, uh, as far as humans are animals, though I've seen some would make me you know, want to believe that. Uh, I think it depends on who gets to decide where the classifications are drawn. Uh, if, you don't, if you divide them up, for instance, uh, maybe God's classification system is not the same as Carolus Linnaeus's classification system. It could be that God considers whales, since they live in the water, part of the fish family. Now we've decided to divide them up based on whether they breathe air above water and have milk glands and you know, uh, have hair, et cetera, et cetera. So it goes back to really who gets to decide what the classification divisions are, and then you can change them wherever you want. I would say plants have a body, animals have a body and a consciousness of life, and man has a body and a consciousness of life and a consciousness of God. There's something very different between man and the animals. None of the animal, animals have culture like music and thoughts and express their words and their emotions in, in writing and, and pass down this information generation after generation. Uh, so I'd say we're very different than the animals. Uh, I would not want to do that. Okay, my question, I don't know if it would matter to you, uh, Dr. Hartman. Uh, you may not even want to give a response. You certainly, certainly can if you want. The question is, where did you get your degree from and what is it in? I get asked this question a lot uh, as if usually it's an indication. When someone starts attacking a man personally, which is often what it leads to, these kind of questions, and I'm not saying it is, but often it is, that's an indication they're losing the debate on common sense, logic, and other things, and so they're starting to look for an ad hominem attack on the individual. This is like the you know, Western Union guy comes with a telegram, and you read the telegram, and you don't like what it says, so you shoot the messenger boy. <laughs> that's, that's what happened. So the question, do you have a PhD? Uh, the dictionary definition of PhD is a doctor of philosophy. I went to a small non-accredited Christian university in Colorado Springs, Patriot University. I earned a doctor of philosophy degree. There's their phone number. Call them up if you don't believe me. Uh, they have about 400 students. They have about 25 graduates every year. There were three graduating that year with me with a PhD in education. My degree is in education. It's from a non-accredited school. I don't argue credentials with anybody. If you don't like to call me Dr. Hoven, call me Kent or Hey You or whatever you, I don't care, but deal with the issue, okay? The issue is not whether a person has a degree. I worked very hard for my degree. I don't know if other people work hard for theirs or not. But when a person gets to the point where they're attacking you personally, that's an obvious sign they are losing the debate. So keep that thought in mind. Thank you. Well, let, let me just remind everybody that I didn't ask this question. So, and I don't participate in the ad hominem, you know, uh, I'm not going to attack uh, Dr. Hovind at all. Um, where did I get my education and what subject? I have a bachelor's uh, of arts degree from the University of Missouri, uh, granted in 1990, uh, in anthropology, and I have a PhD, a doctor of philosophy, uh, from Texas A&M University, Giga Maggie, right? Uh, from 1996, also in anthropology. Um, my dissertation was in archaeology, um, uh, and in it's, uh, it's available, by the way, if you want to look at it through University of Microfilm. I, I didn't bring a copy of my diploma, uh, but you know, I have it hanging on my wall if anyone cares to look at it. That's the answer to that question. Oh, my question. Well, I love this question. How, if we evolved from apes, why do we have a conscious, I guess it's consciousness, know what is right and wrong? Some of, I'm sorry, some of these are in pencil and they're kind of hard to read. How, if we evolve from apes, why do we have a conscious know what is right and wrong and apes do not? Uh, I work with apes uh, almost on a daily basis. In fact, I'm on the board of governors for the Little Rock Zoo, and I'm also director of the primate enrichment program. And I didn't know, by the way, I thought this would be a good time to bring this up, that y'all were taking up a collection, we're going to split the money with us. I got a little speaking fee last year when I was here, and I donated the money to the primate enrichment fund at the Little Rock Zoo. So if I get any money tonight, that that's where the money's going to go. We use it to buy... Um, what we call enrichment items. See, because apes are very similar to humans in terms of their consciousness, in terms of their behavior, in terms of their intelligence. Do you know, for example, that 
chimpanzees have been given human intelligence tests and have scored in the low 60s, which is just below normal for human intelligence. I wonder what they would score if they were given an ape intelligence test and what we would score on that test. See, I think they do know right from wrong. I work with these guys on a regular basis. In fact, um, um, I encourage you all to come to the zoo, and if you get out there about 9 o'clock or 9.30 in the morning, you'll see the results of this enrichment program. I've got a lot of my students that work with me out there. Let me tell you what behavioral enrichment is. Apes are kind of like humans, mentally. In other words, if you just put one in a cage, and a lot of you may remember the Little Rock Zoo when they used to put the primates in the concrete cages with the bars, and they would sit there and throw feces at you or bang their head against the bars. Think about what you would do if you were locked in solitary confinement and had people come and stare at you all day and throw things at you and spit at you. You'd go crazy. And that's what the apes do. They go crazy. One of the ways we try to overcome that is providing what we call behavioral enrichment. We give them things to do to occupy their minds because they have minds that need to be occupied. We give them toys to play with. We, give them, uh, we, we don't just throw their food to them like we used to do in the old days at the zoo. We put it in puzzle boxes, things they have to manipulate with their hands, figure out with their brain how to get this puzzle open so I can get the food out. Um, I encourage you all to come to the Little Rock Zoo between 9 and 9.30 in the morning, go up to the great ape area, and you'll watch uh, the apes come out and get their enrichment items. You'll see them play with it. They use clothing. Uh, they use boxes. You know, they can communicate with us using American Sign Language. I had an interesting debate with a uh, linguistics professor one time who said that apes don't understand language. They do simple mimicry. And I said, well, you know, Washu, the chimpanzee, knows 290 signs in American Sign Language. How many words of chimpanzee do you know? Thank you. All right, let's see. If how, if we evolved from apes, why do we not why do we have a conscious conscious uh, know what is right and wrong and apes do not? I think it is fascinating to study the apes. The apes are very complex creatures, and I'm thrilled for those who take time to study them and, and uh, try to protect them and things like that. I'm certainly not in favor of exterminating any species at all. But I think the fact that the ape is such a complex creature and is able to, to work very well in his environment is proof he, he was designed by a very intelligent designer. Certainly not proof that we have a common ancestor with them. Uh, again, a freshman law student could take that one apart in a few seconds if it was on trial. Uh, but it's, uh, it's not, unfortunately. It needs to be. They keep putting creation on trial. You know, should it be taught in the schools? Well, let's put evolution on trial. <laughs> Where's the evidence for this theory? Okay, and so I have no other response other than I agree they're very complex creatures, but I think it's evidence of design. It's not evidence of a common ancestor. Uh, the question, there's two questions on one, Dr. Hartman, if you don't mind. Apparently one of your students, because um, they signed their name, you said they get credit or something. Uh, what is your definition of kind? I would say uh, the same kind of animal are those that were probably originally able to reproduce. In the original created kind, they were able to reproduce, and they may have diversified now because of all sorts of factors, that now they're no longer able to reproduce, but they're probably still recognizable as the same kind as having descended from an animal that was able to reproduce. Second question on the same card, so your student gets two points, I guess. Why can't you believe evolution and creation? Can you prove there's a God? Well, I guess you'd have to go back to what is the definition of evolution. If you mean animals produce a different, a totally different kind, well, there's no evidence for that. If you mean can animals produce varieties, well, certainly I believe that. So you'd have to define the word evolution before I could answer that question. Um, as far as could God use evolution, couldn't God have used evolution to get us here? Well, I, I have several points I'd like to make on that. Uh, number one, that is not the clear teaching of the Bible. I mean, that's pretty obvious. If you want to believe God used evolution, you're certainly welcome to do that. However, that is not what the Bible teaches. Secondly, I have to point out, that would be a retarded God who couldn't make it right first time. I would not worship a God like that, that's for sure. 